Tonight, uh, we continue with our special focus on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals with a focus on industry, innovation and infrastructure. And the United States evacuates at least 40 of its citizens from quarantined Diamond Princess cruise ship who already are infected with the coronavirus. Our website, channelstv.com, has more information on our top stories and others. Subscribe and watch Channel Television's live stream on YouTube and other social media platforms using your mobile device browser or download the Channels TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. You can also watch us via your smart TV platforms on Apple TV, Android TV, Fire TV and, of course, Roku. Yeah, you, some of you did send in some stories to our eyewitness portal. Let's take a look at some of them, shall we? We'll begin with this image showing a house on fire. According to our eyewitness reporter who sent this uh, from Kufang in Joss, the Plateau State capital, the outbreak was due to an illegal electrical connection. He reports that two persons were injured. Thankfully, no lives were lost. Our next story is from... Umorum Ide in Anambra State showing the extent of damage done on this piece of land by gully erosion. Our eyewitness laments how several homes have been swept by the raging waters is calling for help from both state and federal government. Our final story is from Lekiekpe Expressway here in Lagos showing this gridlock. Eyewitness laments spending between three to four hours uh, for a journey that should have taken him only just a few minutes. He blames the jam on poor state of roads. Thank you for sending in these stories and please keep them coming. To some politics now, the last is yet to be heard on the emergence of Mr. Dwoye Diri as the governor of Bielsa State as the All Progressives Congress is asking the Independent National Electoral Commission to conduct a fresh election in the state. The Supreme Court had, nullif had nullified the election of David Lyon, candidate of the APC who was declared winner of the election in the state in November. The Apex Court asked INEC to issue certificates of return to candidates of the party with the next highest number of lawful votes and with the required constitutional geographical spread in the election. On Friday, INEC declared Dwoye Diri of the People's Democratic Party as the governor-elect, and he was subsequently sworn in. In a letter today, APC chairman Adam Zoshomole told INEC that Diri did not meet the requirements and that a fresh election should be held. The letter, in part, reads... In the said judgments of the Supreme Court, the candidature of our governorship and deputy governorship candidates were nullified, and the commission was ordered to issue fresh, elect fresh certificates of returns with the highest number of votes with the required geographical spread. It is, however, to be noted that the Supreme Court did not void the votes that our party polled at the election, and the implication of this is that the votes of the All Progressives Congress must be reckoned with in determining whether any other candidates polled majority of lawful votes cast in one quarter of at least two-thirds majority in the state. And that is the newly sworn in governor of Bayelsa State, uh, Mr. Dwoyediri, who joined Christian Faithful in Yenagoa, the state capital, for a Thanksgiving service on his assumption of office as governor. The elated governor, who is accompanied by his wife, affirmed that power indeed comes from God, as he calls for an industrial revolution in the state to grow its economy. He's also encouraging Bayelsa indigents and diaspora to join him in developing the state. Let us not be vindictive. This lesson is not only for Bayelsa, this lesson is for Nigeria. That no man has power high and above the Almighty Creator. It is to call on all Bayelsans, home and abroad, 
batteries, a new government in place in Bayosa. And we are inviting them to come with their skills, to come with their resources, to come and invest in Bayosa. Let us give peace a chance. Without security, nobody will come to Bayosa. We must ensure that Bayelsa is peaceful and Bayelsa is uh, secure. A rapidly growing world with a population figure put at 7.8 billion people would require investments in infrastructure in order to achieve sustainable developments. That's what goal number nine of the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations is set to address. In continuation of our special focus on the UN Sustainable Development Goals, our correspondent Chris Lems reports on building resilient infrastructure, promoting inclusive and sustainable industrialization and fostering innovation. Road, road transportation. Information and communication technologies, sanitation, <laughs> electrical power and water are vital to the growth and development of any society. As long as communities still exist where these infrastructure, economic and social amenities, including classrooms, healthcare centers are lacking, the mandate of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals to end poverty, protect the planet and ensure that all people enjoy peace and prosperity by 2030 will be a mirage. According to the United Nations Development Programme, 2.3 billion people lack access to basic sanitation worldwide. 2.6 billion people are set to be without constant electricity in developing nations and 90% of the 4 billion people without internet access are also found in developing nations. Though massive reconstruction work are ongoing in the road and rail transport subsectors to connect communities, Nigeria still needs to invest as much as $30 billion annually in infrastructure for the next 10 years to tackle the deficits. The country is said to have a housing deficit of 18 million units. Where is the data? Who conducted the study to determine the number of deficits that we have? While the federal government disagrees with the figure being bandied about, a real estate developer sees public-private partnership as a way out. The private or uh, public investors have to be involved in all this. So it will make the price flexible and also you can do instrumental pay for the citizen. Growing industrialization is being fueled through the application of innovative technology which is key to solving economic and environmental challenges, providing employment opportunities for millions of tech-savvy individuals. How do developing countries make the most of the opportunity? People within the tech ecosystem, in fact, are luckier than others because they are able to even leapfrog a lot of these things using technology, right? So um, as a nation, we just need to have that conversation as a cohesive team, right, to say, how do we, from local government level to state to national level, ensure that people are able to run businesses and start businesses um, easily. The government needs to look at how do you create funds available for innovators in every sector and see what if you seed funding and see how you can give those funds for them to innovate. 2030 is barely 10 years from now. There appears to be a great gap to bridge. Therefore, tracking the progress of various countries and providing the needed support among other collaborative efforts will ensure no one is left behind. Chris Elems, Channels Television News. We're now being joined on the news at 10 by Mr. Kunle Oying Loye, a former CEO of Infrastructure Bank and current managing director, group managing director of CIFAX Group. He joins us now on the news at 10 to take a look at the race towards attaining uh, goal number nine of the United Nations SDGs. And uh, that, of course, includes infrastructure. And it doesn't seem like we're any closer to the goal, you know, than when we first begun. Why are we experiencing this? And is the federal government doing enough to help us meet that goal? Thank you very much. Um, 
It's an interesting um, topic. Um, SDG 9 mm. is expected to three major things. Uh, talk about innovation, industry, and infrastructure. And if we're going to have to assess ourselves as to where we are, on infrastructure, we developed the Integrated Infrastructure Master Plan ourselves, which was homegrown. We've done so much in, in terms of talking and writing, mm -hmm. but in terms of um, doing something on ground, I think uh, much is to, to be desired. Uh, it's not for lack of uh, effort, but resources. Maybe what we need to do is perhaps we need to coordinate more, you know, uh, whether I'm federal government thinking they could go it alone and do it. It's not going to be possible until we bring maybe the private sector in strongly as strong partners, not just as uh, passerbys. Now, on innov innovation, we can't move forward if we don't innovate. But you cannot innovate if you don't have research centers, if you don't have structure that support people that are thinking of better ways of doing things. I don't know how many research centers we have in Nigeria where we can actually mm -hmm. get um, real growth momentum that we require in terms of innovation. In terms of industry, we've seen it. Um, aside from uh, the death of, um, in those days, you go to Apapa, you go to um, Ilupeju, you go to everywhere. The machine are churning out something and people are moving up and taking their shift. That's no longer the case. So in terms of uh, inclusive um, industrial development, I don't see where it is happening. Yes, we're concentrating on uh, MSME, but again, the momentum that we have gotten, I don't know whether that has translated to regrowth. So yeah. it's of concern. And it appears you, you, you feel bringing in the private sector will inject you know, that energy that you know, this really needs. Why do you think there is no trust between the federal government and the private sector? Uh, because we're just 10 years away from 2030. Uh, that's not much time. What's the difference between the fellow in the federal ministry of offices and the guys in their private offices? There's nothing. We have common goal developing Nigeria. Indeed, there shouldn't be the issue of trust. If all our focus is about the growth and development of our nation, all our ideas should be governized, process, and work towards it. So the question is not whether trust. What is in trust? Like now, we're fighting security. Does, you know, the insurgent doesn't recognize whether you're a professor or you're an average citizen. So what is important is to know that the future of this country depends on actions we take now, mm -hmm. and we must all come together. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Uh, that's my take. Yeah, and I think one of those actions is probably the 100 billion naira sukuk bond uh, that the federal uh, government is engaged in, one of the financing tools it has engaged in. Uh, do you think that this and other borrowings are uh, viable alternatives? There are too many alternatives. Because what can 100 billion do? 100 billion cannot even finish legacy by them. It will fix something. It will fix something. But there is so much we could do in Nigeria if we all come together. Right, for me, we are, some of us are advocates of toll, toll roads, letting private sector reap, you know, benefit of their investment, give them confidence, sanctity of contract. You know, all these are the ingredients that will come together and unleash on this, you know, required infrastructure, resources that are, I do somewhere. Right, you will, we've created enough laws. We're, Nigeria is one of the best, you know, um, countries with requisites uh, law and regulations for private sector participation in infrastructure and mm -hmm. a couple of other things. But we have not put them to test. We've created them the sovereign wealth, yeah. which with a pool of funds, and you can leverage its own fund in several folds to bring all the funds from abroad. But we must allow, you know, deliberately starting infrastructure to be handled by private sector. Bring them on board, let them be happy. Because at the end of the day, it's our country. It's our country. If we don't take action now, and the rot and decay continues, I don't know where our children will, you know, many of them will send them abroad yeah. for training. Will they come back home? It's of concern if we don't do something now. Hopefully we're on the path to getting it right, Mr. Kulu. Oh, yes. Right. Thank you, thank you again for being with us on the News at 10. Appreciate your presence thank and you. your analysis. Thank you.